Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are, well, you've seen this before. <laughs> this is the NTEC select again. Let's turn it around so you can actually uh, see the right way up. Uh, and that, this works. It's a fascinating little machine that uh, uses vacuum fluorescent display to show off uh, different LED well lights to make up the game. It's an interesting device, certainly. Uh, it, but we got it. It has a couple of issues. So first of all, there's this... Uh, Can you see that properly? Let me get it into view. There you go. So you can see that where it looks like someone's tried to take a chunk out of it. That's one thing we need to prepare, although that's a trickier thing. But then the other thing is it's missing one of the battery compartments. So one of these. Now these are identical. So I can put this one over here and it will fit just fine. So the key is really just to get another one of these. So there's only a way we're going to do that. We're going to make our own one. And to do that, we need... Apologies for the uh, <laughs> for the rustling packets. So there are two things uh, we can use. It's a two-part system. So we have this, which once that zooms in, uh, things there you go, is uh, a silicon rubber which we'll be using to make a mold. And then there is this, which is a liquid polyurethane plastic, and this will effectively make uh, allow us to uh, just make a plastic part using casting from a silicon mold. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a mold of this and then we're going to fill it with the plastic and hopefully we will get a close enough representation that we can literally just have two of those. Right, let's get on with the process. Right, so there are a couple of other things we need as well as all of the various chemicals. We uh, need something to make the standoffs with so i'm using blue tack i'll explain those later we also need scales because this stuff is measured in uh, by weight rather than by volume and we need uh, something to mix it with or in so we have these little mixing cups although anything will do and we also need oh, there we go this release spray so it's a silicon release spray uh, basically that will stop the uh, latex from sticking to anything except the stuff we want it to uh, stick to, including itself, because it's a two-part mold. So we'll have one bit that's made and then um, sets, and then a second bit over the top. And by spraying the release spray across that first set part, it won't the two sides won't join. Latex is very good at joining with itself. We also need some place to make the mold. Now, I don't have anything that is a reasonable size because we don't have a huge amount of this. This stuff is quite expensive, relatively. And I think this is enough. I think only half, we use half and half of this. So half for one side, half for the other. So we don't need a huge space and I haven't got anything that's really a decent size. So we will make our own. And we will, of course, make our own using, uh, well, Lego, obviously, because it's Lego. <laughs> now, Lego, as I found on previous uh, attempts to use Lego's molds, is not actually waterproof. Uh, so even though it's obviously engineered to very high tolerances, they're not quite high enough, and this will start leaking through over time. So we will have uh, we will make the main frame using Lego, and then we will put cling film on the inside to uh, add a watertight seal to it, and that should do fine. Right, so I guess the first thing is we make, let's make our standoffs. So this here base should be fine. We want, um, although we want to use as little of this as possible, we do need some spacing. So uh, about an inch space all around is probably best. Um, and this should give us that, even when we have, let's find some blocks, hold on. taking apart some of my grandchildren's wonderful concoctions to do this, but I'm sure they'll be fine. <clears throat> Apologies, by the way, because I, I will sound a bit croaky and a bit winded. Uh, I am just getting over a good old bout of Corona, which I did manage to catch. So, yes, that's been interesting. Uh, and yeah, there you go. We've got... There's a decent amount of room there, I'd say. We just... Uh, Probably not perfect, but it will do. We can always put these on the outside instead. 
do it like that. That's yeah, that's fine. There's plenty of room there. Not a problem. Right. So I will build this eyeliner. Off. Let's do the standoffs first, because then we'll know exactly how high and everything we need to build. Not that it matters, of course. <coughs> but it also means I can explain the standoffs. So, whilst we could just have that resting there, it means that this whole side will be effectively at the top of the mould. And we don't want that. We just want a small feed hole, but we also need a second hole to let the air escape. Because once we've got the mold and we start pouring the plastic into it, we need to replace the air with plastic. So we want somewhere for the air to be able to get out of. So we want two, ideally conical, because we want the entry point to be wider than the actual point it touches to this, because whatever's on this, we're going to have to cut off. So we put it this side. I hope that it does actually rest on this properly. We'll probably have to hold it up another way as well on the side of the thing, but this is just to keep it off the ground. So there we go. There's our standoffs. They should be relatively easy to cut out. And yeah, we'll, we'll have to also put probably something on the top layer just to keep it level. Only while we're pouring in the bottom layer. Uh, once that's in there, it will stay still anyway, so it's not a problem. Right, so let's build some Lego. Right, that should do that. That's um, it does need some definite support at the top, but it is indeed staying. It's well below the line, so we've got like a good probably half an inch. An inch would be better, admittedly, but I'm really running low on Lego. I don't know how. There's definitely enough Lego, but it's a giant bucket of Lego, and I can't find all the bits I need. So that will do. For now, that's fine. That's over a Lego height of gap. So I think that should be okay. Right. So the next step is to get some cling film, put it in there. We'll just put some more blocks to kind of pin the cling film in as well. And then we can start mixing the material. Right. Let's pause for now and get everything ready. Right, so there we have it. I've now put the cling film in and I've also moved two of the blocks, one there and one there, so that they're kind of holding this rigid. Uh, it's not anywhere near halfway, so it'll be fine. We just fill that halfway and then we'll replace the blocks to do the next half. Okay, so the next step is to mix the uh, ingredients, I guess, the uh, chemicals. And if we look at the actual case itself, you can see it, it tells you basically some of the standard stuff. I've got no idea if we're going to be able to zoom into that. Possibly not. Anyway, this says it's a 10 to 1 mixture, which is kind of a good job because this is the other part of that. And as you can see, the uh, <laughs> there's a big difference between the two. But it basically means for every uh, 10 of these, we have one of these. So by weight again. Uh, we're going to use half of this and it's 500 grams. So there's 500 grams base. So we're going to put 250 of this in. And if we put 250 of this in, it means that we need 25 of this. That's a tenth of 250. Uh, now, really good stuff about this is because this is white and this is red. So, well, like a pinky red. And when it's all mixed in properly, you will just get a solid pink color. So you know when you've actually mixed it all clear properly. Right. Let's move this out of the way for now. Bring our scale in. 
and our mixing cup. Oh, you know what? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to spray some of this stuff into our mix mold just so it doesn't, it makes it easier to remove it afterwards. This Lego will, of course, be thoroughly cleaned when this is dealt with. Right. So we're going to put in our base first. It's currently stuck to loads of plastic, of uh, blue tech. So we're going to aim for about 250 grams of this. So if we turn that on and it's zeroed. So then we pour. I'll overshoot. Two ten, two twenty, slow down, two thirty, two forty, right. Go really slow now. Get rid of the lid so we can catch drips. 48, 249, 250. Right, that's it. <laughs> Let's do this up. Oh, by the way, you should probably be using uh, protective gloves and breathe a mask when you're doing this. They are chemicals after all. Right, 251, but that's close enough. So we'll just up, add on two. Uh, 25 to that, so that is 276. There we go, that's close enough. Right, now we have, this isn't too bad in terms of um, the speed we have to do stuff. This has got quite a long um, work time, but there's no need to take our time. So we need to mix this in nice and thoroughly until we've got a solid pink white color. At the moment you see we've got lots of white and also red around. So let's give this a really good mix. So we have a much more solid color. Make sure we get it from the corners as well. Come on, mix it in. There we go. We are almost there. <coughs> All right, so that, as you can see, is a nice solid pink color. So what we want to do is pour this in, and we don't want to just pour it in right over. We need to pour it in from a height because we're trying to uh, get rid of as much air as possible and if we pop it in from a height it means the air will have a chance to basically expand and escape okay. here's some space here because we need to pull this in to one of the sides right so we pour it in from a height let's try to get it so that it's going oops like not onto the thing which we've just done <laughs> Give it time to settle. And we'll pour it in from this side as well. <clears throat> Again, give it time to settle. Well, you know what? That is way too much. <laughs> That's unfortunate. That was way too much. That has already filled in. And I can see we've got some air bubbles, so we're going to have to 
Just give this a knock like this, just to try to get some of these air bubbles out. And the air bubbles aren't a problem as long as they're not around the actual object too much. Do want to get rid of this here though? Nothing decent to rub it off with. Get rid of that. Oops. Don't move the object too much. Oh. That is literally not doing anything worthwhile. <laughs> right, but there we go. That's the first part of the mold done. So there are quite a few air bubbles, which is unfortunate, but again, it's not necessarily a crisis. Right, so if we take a look at the actual thing, so basically that tells us nothing. We need to look at the actual second part. Right, the second part tells us that the working time is 40 to 60 minutes. So we had um, almost an hour to actually get it right. Um, and the curing time is around six to eight hours. So in about six hours, we can come and <clears throat> start on the second half of the of the mold itself. The really good thing is that by, when this is cured, it'll just peel out of here. So <laughs> it won't cause us any problems. Right. All right then. Well, I will see you in about six hours then.